Hi and welcome to this video called Task Manager and Task. We all know that Task Manager has this button called End Task, which is supposed to kill the process in question. But is it that simple? Let's see if we can find out. So first, let me open Task Manager. We can see here we have two locations for the End Task button. We have one of those here in the Processes tab. There's the End Task button at the bottom right. And then if you go to the Details tab, we can also see there's an End Task button here. So let's see if they're actually the same. Let's go ahead and launch something like Notepad. Here's Notepad. Let me look at that up here. If I go ahead and look at Notepad here and I press the End Task button, Notepad goes away if I confirm the kill. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and run another Notepad and see what's going on here. So here's Notepad again. Let's go and press End Task here. And again, Notepad goes away, this time without any questions asked. So perhaps not exactly the same. But there's some other detail here which is interesting. If I launch Notepad again, you'll notice that in the Processes tab, in fact, there's another child node here, which is in fact a window. That's the Notepad window. And if I right-click here or just uh, hover on this particular item selected and then use End Task, it seems to be the same. But let's see if it indeed it is actually the same. If I go ahead and open yet another notepad and type something, and then I go ahead and try to end task here, you'll notice that that doesn't really work. Instead, I get this option to see whether I want to save the contents of the notepad window here because the contents has changed. So obviously, it seems to be a bit different than the previous end task. What happens if I select the actual parent node here and use end task? And you can see notepad goes away. So obviously something different is happening between these two cases and indeed we have two different ways of terminating the process here. Again, the term task that we've discussed in a previous uh, video, an older video, uh, doesn't really mean anything in Windows in, in that regard. There are processes, there are no tasks. So here's what the real deal is. In the Details tab, when we use the End Task button, we actually call the Terminate Process function behind the scenes, which terminates the process no matter what. So if I have Notepad here again with some modifications, pressing End Task here, I do get the option to kind of make sure that I really want to do that, but then the process goes away. And of course, that only works for processes which have enough power to terminate. So for example, for most protected processes, I won't be able to do that. But that's a different story, which is not part of this video. On the other hand, the other case, when we're looking at the processes tab here, looking at the actual window, so that's different. That's this sub node when I do something and right click and this end task option, which is here in the right click of this menu, but also in the end task button here, if I do select the window rather than the process, this is different. It's actually sending a message of WM close uh, to the window in question, giving that window a chance to close in some way. If I don't have any changes in Notepad, then that closing of the window will also cause the process to be terminated because Windows, well, not Windows, Notepad, when its main window is closed, it simply initiates its own self-termination because it doesn't really need to exist anymore. On the other hand, if there is some change, now the user is in control and the process doesn't necessarily have to die. So if I press cancel here, the process is still very much alive. So let's see if we can implement that in code just to see the two options. So here's Visual Studio. I'm going to grab a console application as usual. I'm going to kill, uh, call my, well, first application a kill. So let's give it uh, an, a solution name called end task just to make it nice. And what I want to do here is to do first the terminate process way of working. And so what I need to do here is to first remove all the boilerplate junk code provided by the wizard, add and include for windows.h as always. And we can of course use stdio here because we might need to display some error. And we'll get, uh, we'll get the process ID here in the command line. Let's do that very quickly. Here's the argv classic name uh, to use. 
and then we'll just go ahead and make sure we have enough parameters. Let's do that for completeness. So if we don't have enough parameters, then let's just indicate that the usage is, is something like kill the process ID based on the command line argument, and in this case we're just done. Otherwise, let's go ahead and open a handle to the process in question. By calling open process, providing the process terminate access mask, this is what we need in order to terminate the process successfully, a false indicates uh, that we don't care about handle inheritance, which is not really interesting for our purpose here. And then the last thing is the process ID. So I'm going to use the A2I simple C function to grab the process ID. If this doesn't work, then there's really nothing that we can do. We can say error opening uh, process. This could be because the process ID is a junk number, which doesn't really represent any process, or it could be just a process which you don't have enough powers to terminate. We can't get that kind of access. And with that, we can just exit. Otherwise, we can call terminate process and just terminate the process and we can set the exit code of the process because in this case, the process terminates immediately and doesn't get any chance to decide what the exit code should be. So it could be anything, but the classic value to use in this case is one. So if this uh, returns true, which it, it should, we can just go ahead and say that uh, we succeeded. Otherwise, we have failed for some reason. Let's just display the reason again by calling get last error. Okay, and with that, technically we're done. We can go ahead and close the handle to the process just to be nice. And we can complete the application here and test it out. So we have a notepad here in question. Let's go ahead and open a command window here. Here goes. Going to switch to x64 debug, good enough. Uh, let me just uh, change the font a little bit to make it a bit bigger. And then we have the kill application here. As you can see, it requires the process ID. So great, let's get, grab the process ID for this notepad instance, 33788, and give it a shot. 33788, let's see. And indeed, we succeed, notepad is gone. Now let's try the opposite way. So notice, we didn't get any chance of saving any data. The process simply terminated. So let's try the other option, which is to send a message to the window. So let's go ahead and create another console application. Let's call that uh, close instead of kill. That sounds a bit uh, nicer. Let's go ahead. So first, let's just uh, do some copy pasting to save some time. So I'm going to grab this stuff here. And uh, we don't need to open handle to the process, in fact. Let's see what we actually do need to do. So for now, let's just paste what we have here. So we have includes, and we're making sure that we are getting a process ID on the command line. It's called close. And now what are we supposed to do? We need to send a message to the first window we encounter in the notepad process. And for that, we're going to use the enum windows API. So first, let's grab the process, the process ID, to make sure we can uh, look that up. So Let's go with A2I again and find the process ID. Now, it may be a garbage process ID, which is fine. We'll try to find that uh, window that, that it has this PID as its parent. If we do, we'll just uh, send a WM close message to it. So the Enum Windows API allows us to provide a callback function that's going to be called for every top level window that we have under this particular desktop. And so let's just go ahead and use the lambda function here to make it slightly easier. So we get the handle to window here, and we have a parameter which we're going to have to use. So the basic idea is this. We're going to call the function get window process thread ID, or thread process ID, or something like that. And the basic idea is that we can get back the thread and process ID of the creators of that window. So we actually don't care about the thread, we just care about the process. So let's create a D word here for the process. Let's call that, well, PID is a bit, uh, going to be a bit confusing, perhaps. Let's use ID. So we have to provide the handle to window. That's the one we get every time this callback is invoked. Let me just use that explicitly to make it uh, clearer. And then we get here the process ID. And if the process ID that we got is, in fact, the process ID that we are aiming for, so we need to have this PID here uh, available to us, but unfortunately, this is a local variable in the enclosing scope. 
And so in order for us to get that, we have to capture this variable in the lambda. Unfortunately, we can't do that because this is a C function, and the only way to work with lambda functions and a C function is to use a non-capturing lambda. And so one way of doing that is to provide this information using this parameter, because that parameter is available to provide any information we might uh, need. So let's just use this as, as at least one option. So let's say something like uh, target uh, PID. Let's just perform the appropriate casting because the actual parameter is something like an L param. Let's just go ahead and do that. And then we can compare to target a PID. And of course, uh, once we have that, we'll have to do the, the deed as we'll see momentarily. But the actual parameter, we have to pass it here. So here's the end of our lambda, and here's the parameter that we can pass. So we'll just pass PID. So this PID becomes P, becomes P here. So this is what happens, and we just need to cast that to make the compiler happy. So once we do get the correct process ID, we can go ahead and post a message. We can use send a message as well, but let's just uh, use post message here to get to our window. And then uh, we need to provide the message WM close. There's no special parameters to that. And you can say return false. Return false indicates that we don't want to continue iterating over windows. Um, and in fact, uh, that is basically it. So whether the window is actually closed or not, we can't really tell because as we, we've seen, it's possible that the user has the option to do something about that, but that's the best at least we can do. Perhaps we should be able to tell whether we have actually done something or at least attempted to, to close the window. Let's just add a printf here saying uh, posting wm close. And perhaps we also should have some uh, boolean here set so that we can specify in, in the outset of enum windows whether we actually managed to find at least one window that was part of that process or not. So we can actually do that, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave that as an exercise for you to see how you can make that uh, properly work. And that should be it. We should try it out, see if that works. Okay, so it compiles. I guess we have to start somewhere. Let's run another notepad. Here it goes. In this case, I'm going to type something to make sure that if I do send WM close message, it won't close the window immediately. So let's go ahead and uh, find our process ID now. That's 73480. So this time I'm going to use close here. So we have 73480. So here it goes. See if that works. And it did. So you can see it's posting a WM close. We get the opportunity in this case to, to save something. If Notepad didn't have any kind of changes, then it would simply close because that's its default behavior, but it doesn't really force a process termination, just a way to say, hey, I'm not interested in this window anymore. And as it happens, that's the way a notepad behaves. So you can see that end task in that case is different than the other end task, which uses terminate process to terminate the process in question.